Welcome to the series of short videos on the methods behind the guidelines from the Technical Support Unit at the University of Bristol. In video one of this series, we explained how network meta-analysis uses trial data to estimate intervention or treatment effects. Here, we will focus on how these estimates are presented and interpreted. To recap, a pairwise meta-analysis estimates the effect of A versus B from multiple head-to-head -head randomized controlled trials. Network meta-analysis estimates the differences between all the interventions in the network, so you can see the effect of B relative to A, C relative to A, and so on. We will go through four summaries from a network meta-analysis that may be presented to the committee in evidence reports. From visualizing the evidence that was included in a network plot, to interpreting estimates of intervention effects in network forest plots and tables, and finally interpreting estimates of intervention rankings. Here is a network plot. The interventions are the points or circles, and where there is a line, it shows that we have trial evidence comparing those interventions directly. In many ways, this is the most important figure in a network meta-analysis because it tells you how much evidence we have, whether the evidence on each comparison is direct or indirect, reminds you how the interventions have been grouped, and alerts you to comparisons where there is little evidence. The amount of evidence on each comparison may be shown by the thickness of the line, which represents the number of studies making that comparison. The points or circles in the network plot also called nodes, represent the interventions. The size of the circles may be made proportional to the number of participants who receive the intervention, or proportional to the number of studies. Inspecting the points, or nodes, means that you can check how the interventions have been defined and that all appear as expected. Sometimes, setting each intervention as a separate node can mean that the network is disconnected. We can include interventions in the network that are not under consideration, for example, unlicensed or not in use in current practice, if doing so connects the network to enable comparisons between interventions that are of interest. We simply ignore the relative effects for those interventions that would not be used in practice. Alternatively, inter interventions may be lumped together where we would not expect differential intervention effects, or where we do not have enough evidence to include them in the network otherwise. Here, lumping two similar interventions into one node gives us a connected network. The network plots can tell us whether we can check the assumptions made in network meta-analysis. If there are multiple trials on at least some of the edges, this allows us to check if the same intervention effect varies in different trials, known as heterogeneity. Here we have multiple studies per comparison in the plot on the left, and so can check for heterogeneity, but we cannot do so for the plot on the right, and so critically assessing the studies becomes even more important. If there are loops in the network, this allows us to check if direct and indirect estimates are in conflict, known as inconsistency. There are loops or triangles in this network, so we have both direct evidence and indirect evidence. For example, we have direct evidence from trials on the comparison between A and B, and the trial evidence from the rest of the connected network provides indirect evidence on the comparison between A and B. This means we can check for inconsistency. Often, all interventions are compared against a common standard, such as placebo or usual care. This creates what is known as a star network, where all comparisons between interventions on the points of the star are based on indirect evidence only. It is not possible to assess inconsistency in a star network, so it is important to critically assess the studies to ensure that the common comparator represents the same intervention in all the studies, 
and patient populations and outcome measures in the studies are comparable. Sometimes we might see a spur off the main network. This is where interventions are connected to the network by a chain of evidence. Some parts of the network are based on both direct and indirect evidence in loops, and other parts will only have direct evidence. So assumptions can be tested for some parts of the network, but not others. We are interested in how effective the different interventions are using an appropriate summary measure. Network forest plots compare interventions to a reference intervention, whilst tables can contain more information, comparing all interventions to each other. Both will present a central estimate of the difference between the interventions and a confidence interval. This is a forest plot for a network meta-analysis of interventions to treat social anxiety. The interventions are shown up the side of the plot, and the relative effects of each intervention are plotted in units of standardised mean difference shown along the horizontal axis. Depending on the outcome type, our summary measure could be the odds ratio, the hazard ratio, risk ratio or mean difference, or, as in the social anxiety example, the standardised mean difference. When we compare the evidence and combine it in a network meta-analysis, we will get estimates of the difference between each pair of interventions on the same scale. The reference intervention here was being on the waiting list. All the intervention effects are compared to being on the waiting list. Intervention effects that are negative indicate anxiety scores were lower for people receiving that intervention compared to people on the waiting list. Remembering that we want to know how effective each intervention was, we look at the central estimate, shown here as circular points in orange. All of these interventions have estimates to the left of the dotted line of no effect. If we look at the points only, it looks like these interventions reduce anxiety compared with waiting list. But how confident are we in that conclusion? To assess this, we look at the confidence or credibility intervals around the estimates. These show a range of values that we can be reasonably confident the true, true value lies within. Some of the estimates have wide uncertainty intervals. We are uncertain about the effects of exercise, which has a wide interval, and more certain about the effects of combined therapy, which has a narrow interval. And what impact does this have on the conclusions? For the interventions pill, placebo and exercise, our estimates are not precise and the interval does include zero. Exercise may be more effective in reducing anxiety scores than wait list, but it could be less effective. These imprecise estimates may come from small studies. Whereas for SSRIs and combined therapies effects relative to wait list, our estimates are precise on the scale of this outcome, and we are confident that the true effect of the intervention in the population is within this small range. Within the evidence report, you may see this phrasing, the interval includes zero. If the uncertainty in interval includes zero, it means that we cannot say there was a difference between the interventions for that outcome. But the size of the interval also matters. If it is precise, we are confident that the effect of the intervention is close to zero. If the interval is wide, we cannot be so confident that there is no difference between the intervention and the reference. Also notice the extremes of the interval. Are the values plausible? If not, it may indicate that there is a lot of uncertainty or conflicting information in the model. You may also be presented with these estimates within tables. Here we have the mean with an uncertainty interval. The interpretation of the uncertainty interval is the same. If it contains zero, we cannot exclude the intervention's effect being close to zero when compared to the reference intervention. To help judge the most effective interventions, you may also be provided with a table of estimates that compare all of the interventions with every other intervention in the network. For example, 
we may want to see how effective each intervention is compared with pill placebo rather than waiting list. And you may want to see how CBT compares with exercise. If there aren't too many interventions, this information can be presented in a triangle table, which will show relative effects between all interventions in the network. Here, group CBT reduces anxiety scores compared to both being on the waiting list and pill placebo. The estimates from the network meta-analysis are displayed in the lower triangle of this table. Sometimes the upper triangle, in blue, displays additional information. The direct estimates from pairwise meta-analysis of head-to-head -head data where they exist can be displayed in the top blue triangle. This allows you to compare whether the network meta-analysis estimates, based on both direct and indirect evidence, differ from the direct estimates of the intervention's effect. These tables can be challenging to digest if there are lots of interventions. So we have described the available evidence in a network plot, the effect sizes compared with a reference intervention in a forest plot, and compared estimates between pairs of interventions in a triangle table. We can rank the treatments by effectiveness compared to a reference and summarize this information in different ranking statistics. An estimate of the intervention's rank is given by the median rank, with a 95% credible interval to show a range of values the rank is likely to take. So, in this example taken from the Guideline on Management of Social Anxiety, group CBT with phenelazine has a high probability of being the best intervention in reducing anxiety scores, with a median rank of 1. It also had a 95% probability of being in the top five tre treatments. Individual CT had a median rank of three and only a 9% probability of being best. Because there is uncertainty in the relative effects, there is also uncertainty in the rankings. This is described in the intervals for rank. Probability best has an intuitive interpretation, but we need to be cautious interpreting this as it can be misleading when estimates are uncertain with wide intervals. The rankogram is the richest information source because it shows how likely each intervention is to take each rank for a given outcome. So it displays the probability that an intervention is best, second best, third best, and so on until the probability it is worst. For example, atomoxetine is likely to be one of the worst of the 48 interventions since it was ranked towards the bottom. Individual CBT was ranked highly. Beware of interventions that have flat distributions like levetiracetam or a high probability of being ranked both best and worst. This usually means that we don't have a precise estimate of their effect. In this situation, it may be appropriate to consider research recommendations rather than treatment recommendations. Remember that ranks and relative effects need to be considered together. Sucra and p-score metrics are calculated through different approaches but are equivalent and similar to the median rank. Both are a cumulative measure of the probability that the intervention is better than others in the network. Interventions that are ranked more highly will have higher Sucra and p-score values. We have covered four ways to present the results from a network meta-analysis. The network plot shows you what we have compared and the evidence it is based on. The forest plot shows you whether interventions were different to a reference. The triangle table shows you whether some interventions were better than others and the rankings provide information on the ordering of the interventions in the network in terms of effectiveness. We need to make sure that we look out for weak points in our networks where the studies may be small or variable. We need to be aware of the uncertainty intervals and use them to make sense of the results. We need to interpret the rankings together with the relative effects and be cautious of rankings where there is a lot of uncertainty with intervention interventions ranked best and worst. Thank you.